Good day, students. My name is Dr. Mary Ann. Today we are going to start the years. It's very important for you to uh, watch the Ministry Book Lecture uh, series because it, it is arranged topic by topic, course by course. Because when you start doing the years, the years require you to have knowledge in setting in more than one course, be able to answer one question, but I'll try to simplify it to the best of my abilities. So let's start. So we're going to start with 2021, then we're going to go down 2020, 2019, and so on and so forth. So let's begin. One of the parts of the central nervous system has a layer, layered arrangement of neurons, among which there are stellate, spindle-shaped, horizontal, and pyramidal cell. This structure corresponds to the following part of the central nervous system. So from the last lecture, we know that the cerebellum has three layers, molecular, perkinger, and granular, while the cerebrum has six layers, the molecular, external granular, external pyramidal, and notice that the external pyramidal has pyramidal cells and the internal pyramidal has large pyramidal cells called bed cells, so very important. Then the last is the multiform layers. So what do you think the answer will be uh, due to these uh, pyramidal cells? Of course, it will be the cerebral cortex. A lab rat has subcutaneously received mercury two chloride in large amounts of five milligram per kg. Twenty four hours later, the plasma creatinine concentration increased several times. What mechanism of intention azotemia is observed in this case? So, because of the mercury two chloride, there was damage of the glomerular or the glomerular filtration um, ability or apparatus. No, let me say the glomerular filtration. Um, structures and because of that that's why you have retention azotomia because you cannot remove um toxic um toxin or like say, like say nitrogenous substances from your blood so that's why it will be retention azotomia so the answer will be decreased glomerular filtration because you damage the kidneys and you cannot filter yes so decreased glomerular filtration after collision of two cars one of the driver has an extremely painful deformity in the middle third of the left shin. The pain intensifies on an attempt to move the left shin. The ends of a bone with triangular section protrude, protrude from the wound. The blood loss increases. What bone is likely to be damaged? So, of course, it's the shin. So, we're talking about the leg. So, we know if it's the leg, there are two bones that make up the leg the tibia and the fibula and he, most and um they not they didn't specify the lateral part and the tibia is the most frequent bone that is um fractured in an accident one of the causes of pernicious anemia is the stop synthesis of transcarine also known as calcium intrinsic factor also called what gastromycoprotein by the parietal cell of the stomach what substance is called calcium extrinsic factor so the answer would be Cobalamin, because calcium extrinsic factor is also called vitamin B12, which is which uh, the other name is cobalamin. A three-year-old child has been brought by an ambulance to the intensive care unit of the infectious disease hospital. On examination, the child is in severe condition. Skin and mucus are dry. Tissue to go is reduced. The patient history states that profuse diarrhea and recurrent vomiting were observed throughout the previous day. After the child has eaten food products of poor quality, what type of salt and water imbalance is likely to develop in this patient? So, of course, we know that it's a form of dehydration because of this decrease of uh, skin sugar, the diarrhea, and the vomiting. So, which dehydration? So, isoosmolar dehydration will be seen in cholera infection. Now, because this child has diarrhea and vomiting for a long period of time, she has lost a lot of solutes. So, because of that, her blood will, be, will not have solutes and that will be hypoosmolar dehydration. But if this question was talking about the child lost a lot of, the child lost a lot of water um, through sweat, it will be hyperosmolar dehydration because if you lose a lot of water through sweat, there'll be a lot of concentration in the blood, a lot of concentration of solutes in the blood. So that's why it will be hyperosmolar. But in this question, the child lost solutes. So in the blood, it will be hypoosmolar dehydration. A histological preparation demonstrates a gland. In its lobules, there are arsenal with secretory cells that have two zones. The basal zone is homogeneous basophilic, while the epical one is zymogen osophilic. What organs has this chemo? 
morphological features. So we know it's not any of the parotid gland because the parotid gland, we know it's not any of the salivary glands because the parotid gland is serous, the sublingual gland is mucus, and the submandibular gland is mixed. However, if you watch the lecture and you uh, watch the video I referred, you will know that the pancreas um, stores hormones in the inactive form called zymogen. So what are you thinking? Of course, the pancreas. And because they say they say asina, yes? Okay, not really the asina, but because of the zymogen or syphilic um, um, structure they saw. Because you also have asina in your parotid gland. So it's because of the zymogenic or syphilic substance. That's why we're going for pancreas. Okay, so work with the following specimen. So you can see there's a lot of vaccines here. So let me typically differentiate two terms for you. Active and passive immunity. Active immunity means it is a person, it's it is a person that made the antibodies, but passive immunity, the person did not make the antibodies. The antibodies were given to this person. So natural means that um, the person made the antibodies, but due to infection. But in artificial, the person made the antibodies, but due to vaccination. In passive um, immunity, the antibodies were given, but in natural, through the mother, via the mother's milk. But in artificial, these um, antibodies were given via uh, intravenous infusion of his serum. Yes? So you can see this another beautiful um, picture that helps to differentiate these monoclonal antibodies. So the answer would be because of of its vaccine, it is active because the person is making the antibodies, but artificial because it is not due to what infection, it is due to vaccine. A 45 year old man with acute pneumonia has developed pulmonary edema on the sixth day of the illness, which resulted in his death. Authorities show that the entire upper lobe of the right lung is affected. It is dense gray on section, so we know that this is gray hepatization. It has fibrinous deposit on the pleura. It this is very important. A cloudy liquid flows from the section or maybe a yellow discharge flows from the section surface. So when they cut it, yes. Microscopically, microscopy show fibrin, neutrophil, macrophage, hemolytes, erythrocytes in the lumen of the alveolar. What type of um, pneumonia it is? So I'm going to show you again, but I think I explained this in details in the lecture, yes. So let's look for, so you can see that uh, lobar pneumonia is also called crupus pneumonia, lobular pneumonia, fibrinous pneumonia, and pleural pneumonia. And you can see what I was talking about, the, the stages, congestion and edema. Then we have the we have the red hepatization, the gray hepatization, the resolution, yes. And you can see they said in the gray hepatization, it's fibrinous superative exudase, gray-brown appearance, yes. So that's why the answer will be crupus pneumonia. Note, if they're talking about bronchial pneumonia, they're going to talk about the bronchus. If it's hypostatic pneumonia, I think in this photo, hypostatic pneumonia, in bronchial pneumonia, they will talk about the bronchus. Yes, see, in bronchi affected, they will explain um, um, pathological features in the bronchi. Then hypostatic um, pneumonia is due to, mostly seen in bed, reading patients, so they will say this in the question, yes? So that's why the answer would be crupus, not hypostatic and not bronchopneumonia. Acute respiratory distress syndrome is due to, um, is due to surfactant deficiency. The viral pneumonia will not be in one lobe. Viral pneumonia will be in everywhere of the lung. And I don't think there will be pus too, so there will not be like exudate. A man presents with convergent strabismus. What muscle of the eyeball is damaged? So, of course, convergent strabismus means that the eye is moving towards the middle. Why? Because this patient cannot abduct, meaning the patient cannot move the eye to the lateral region. So, what muscle will be damaged? Of course, it will be the, ab um, it's the abducens nerve that is damaged. And the abducens nerve innervates was the lateral rectus muscles. Autopsy of the body of a 45 of a 40 year old patient dictated group of enlarged follicles in small intestine. Uh, so what do you see here? They said their surface have a pattern that resemble gyra and sulci of the brain. Yes. So I'm going to show you another photo again, but I explained this in the in the lecture. Yes. So you can see what is the morphology of semolena. Is in this is in I think it's here, yes. So you can see something called the medullary swelling. What did they write? Their surface is striated and like brain, so it looks like 
screen here. So this is what it looks like if you want to study on it. But we explain this in the and very important you know that this zinc and necrosis is a very a serious complication of typhoid fever. So what would the answer be? Typhoid fever. Yeah. A man presents with decreased blood pH, low level of carb, carb by carb. Increased blood and urine levels of lactic and pyruvic acid. What type of acid base imbalance is it? So, of course, I already told you there's decreased blood pH. So, we know it's acidosis, but which acidosis? So, because what did they say here? That increased blood and uric level of lactic and pyruvic acid. So, this person is losing acidity in the urine. So, it would be in metabolic acidosis. But if this person was losing, losing acid via respiration, maybe they talk about breathing, it would be respiratory acidosis. A seven-year-old child has anemia. Lab testing determined the deficiency of pyruvate kinase in an erythrocyte. In this case, the main role in anemia development belongs to the disturbance of the following process. So again, I'll repeat it because during the lecture, I repeated this so many times. Pyruvate ki kinase converts phosphoenol pyruvate to, py to pyruvate. Pyruvate dehydrogenase is part of the um, pyruvate enzyme complex. We explained this in the lecture biochemistry series, which consists of three enzymes and five coenzymes, and it's the function is to convert pyruvate to acetyl-CoA and carbon dioxide. Then pyruvate carboxylase converts pyruvate to oxaloacetate so that oxaloacetate can enter the Krebs cycle, and pyruvate carboxylase requires biotin as a coenzyme. Now, why am I saying this? Because your red blood cell do not use um they do not they don't have mitochondria so they cannot perform aerobic glycolysis now if this person has pyruvate kinase deficiency so we know that automatically that red blood cell um, gets ox gets um um energy via anaerobic because they don't have mitochondria so they cannot do aerobic so because this person has pyruvate kinase deficiency this person cannot convert um first of all pyruvate to pyruvate so this red blood cell will not have energy and will not perform what anaerobic glycolysis i strongly recommend you watch um this video uh it's not this video it is actually this video oh sorry let me type it uh, pyruvate kinase deficiency. I strongly recommend you watch this video by JJ Medicine. It's very interesting. Okay. Autopsy of the body of a person. 12 minutes. Autopsy of the body of a person who died after an abdominal surge revealed numerous thromba in the veins of the lesser pelvis. Clinically, thrombo. Embolism syndrome was registered. Where should the pathology search for thromboembolism? So we know that um, the um, in, this, in the arteries, the aorta is a large artery, then to smaller arteries, yes, and then enters small veins to large uh, veins, yes, and then large vein like the superior vena cava, and then for it for this uh, vein blood in the vein to get oxygenated, they have to go to the what the pulmonary artery, yes, and now this person has what thromba in the veins of the lesser pelvis. So it's from the veins of the lesser pelvis to go to the inferior vena cava. From the inferior vena cava, or maybe superior vena cava. No, inferior vena cava, because it's coming from the lower part of the body, yes? So the inferior vena cava would drain into the right atrium, which goes to the right ventricle, and to pump it into the, to the lungs to get oxygenated. And what um, vessel is it? Is the pulmonary artery. So that's, you know, that is where the smallest um, vessel is before it will enter the heart again to get to the large vessel. So that's why it's the pulmonary artery. Okay. Exo and endotoxin aggressively play an important role in the pathogenesis of cholera. Dehydration is the main disease. What is the following pathogenetic effect? So what you should know that cholera do not invade the intestine. That's why when you have cholera um, presents with diarrhea, there's no blood because it doesn't invade. The mechanism is that cholera will cause the activation of adenylase cyclase, which will also increase cyclic AMP level, which will in, um, um, stimulate the um, secretion of chlorine into the intestinal lumen, and sodium will also follow chlorine, and sodium will enter the in intestinal lumen, yes, and what happens next, water also loves to follow sodium, and that will cause what? Diarrhea, because water plus the feces for sodium, yes? Yeah? So that's why the answer will be adenylase cyclase activation. I strongly recommend for you to watch this video, Cholera Again by JJ Medicine. 
A worker at a factory that produces vanadium compound presents with increased ossification caused by high calcium level in the bone tissue. This condition is likely to be associated with the following. So they said, well, there's increased ossification, which means what? That there's increased um, mineralization, yes, of bone. So they are making bone. Osteoblast makes the bone. So that's why I answered the osteoblast. What's the function of osteoclast? They degrade the bone. So if Crocs said there's increased resorption, it would have been osteoclast, yes. During an abdominal surgery, a reflex cardiac arrest occurred. Where is the reflex center located? So uh, cardiac arrest is what there's decrease of heart rate, then cardiac arrest as parasympathetic. And we know that the vagus nerve also innovates the um, organs of the abdominal cavity. So they irritated the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve, as I told you, cranial nerve 9 to cranial nerve 12 um, center is what medulla oblongata. A patient has gradually developed a skin plaque on his face. In the center of this plaque, there are necrotic patch and an ulcer. Histopathological analysis of the biopsy material revealed proliferation of atypical epithelial cells with large number of pathological mitosis make this diagnosis. So I told you that once you see atypical cell, pathologic mitosis is a what? It's a form of a cancer or it is malignant, sorry. It is malignant, but they don't talk about, they talk about a cancer, but it doesn't have a typical cell pathological mitosis is benign. Yes, so because of this, we have sarcoma and cancer. These two cancers, one, two. That could be our option because papilloma and fibroma are benign. Yes, we cover this in the lecture. So, of course, it cannot be sarcoma because sarcoma has to do with, it's more of, um, I'm sorry, I forgot that. Let me just quickly check sarcoma. Um, versus carcinoma, yes. So carcinoma has to do with epithelial tissues, while sarcoma has to do with the body tissues like um fat, blood vessels, nerves, bone, muscle. Why carcinoma is just um, epithelial tissues like simple squamous carcinoma. So the answer will be skin cancer because we know it's not sarcoma because they're talking about on his face and on his face you have what a uh, stratified squamous non keratinized which is what skin cancer, not trophic ulcer. Why was I saying this was cancer? Sorry. It's not ulcer, it's a cancer. So we had one, two. So because it's it's talking about epithelial tissue to be skin cancer. A 32-year-old man was diagnosed with acute radiation disease. Lab analysis detected the sharp decrease in platelet serotonin level. The most likely cause of a decrease in platelet serotonin is a disturbed decarboxylation of what? So you can see here, I also I think there's a photo I want to show. Um, the decarboxylation of glutamic acid will give GABA, histidine will give histamine, and thyroxine will give thiamine. Also, look here. Mm, where is it? Mm, okay, so I'll just show you here. Um, serotonin. So what do you see here? Five hydroxy tryptophan, yes, something like that. So that's why you have to be five hydroxy tryptophan because the decarbonation of five hydroxy tryptophan will give you what serotonin. Bacteria enter the alveolar space of an arsenic. Here they interacted with this factor leading to activation of cell localizing the alveolar wall and on the alveolar surface, namely cell. So they want to confuse you because they know that if you know that they know that surfactant is made by type two pneumocytes, but this is a bacteria. What cell with, with reactive bacteria? Of course, to be the alveolar macrophage. Autopsy of a body of a 45-year-old woman who suffered from upper body obesity. Okay, so we can look here. We can see the classic sign of cushion. Moon phase, obesity, fat deposition on the back. If it's a male, you have gynecomastia. Although this part will be big, but you have thin extremity, um, purple stria or stretch marks, uh, heat to resume and amenorrhea in females, okay, but gynecomastia in males. So let's see what we read through. What did they say? There is heat urism, okay, and they said a the woman, yes, stria on the skin, so that an abdomen, that is stretch marks, hypertrichosis and heat urism. Also, they said secondary ovarian dysfunction. Uh, they also said, um, okay, basophilic adenoma. What's the difference between Cushing syndrome and Cushing disease? Cushing disease is when the disorder is due to basophilic adenoma or adrenocortical tropin hormone tumor. 
or Cushing syndrome is just when you have hyper um, um, production of cortisol by your adrenal glands. Due to the uncontrolled intake of vitamin supplement, a child develops anorexia, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, hypothermia, hemorrhage on the skin and mucosa, as well as sign of meningitis. What supplement was the child taking? So remember from our lecture, I told you that people normally focus on hypervitaminosis, but you should know the hypervitaminosis sign. So um, we see that B1 um, causes um the hypervitaminosis causes the signs of sorry of a with hypervitaminosis a is what as you can see the major sign have to do with uh inability to head or neck so like sign of meningitis pain there's also bleeding but if it's in the cat to be kangaroo seating it's very important to differentiate between vitamin hypervitaminosis um of there's also headache in hypervitaminosis uh, A, but in hypervitaminosis E, you see more of, there will still be that sign, but the only difference is that in hypervitaminosis E, what you see is this impaired immune system causing necrotitis and this enterocolitis. So because of that, our answer will be retinal acid to hypervitaminosis uh, of vitamin A because of the classic sign of hemorrhage, okay, there's hypothermia, there's diarrhea, meningitis. What, with age, a person develops breast biopia. Where does it happen? So breast biopia means the gradual um, decreasing of vision due to decreased elasticity of the lens. So that's why the answer will be decreased elasticity of the lens. A 62-year-old man, according to his relative, had three episodes of unconsciousness. His respiratory rate is 18 uh beats per minute heart rate is 45 blood pressure 100 by 70 ECG shows that the frequency of p wave is 80 beats per minute while the frequency of ventricular complex is 42. so mm -hmm, we know uh, that the heart block i strongly recommend you to watch this video heart block by dirty medicine but uh we, we know that the third heart block um the third heart block means that your P and Q waves don't agree. Yes, we explained this heart block uh, very well in pathophysiology series. So as you can see, the P wave, uh, which is, is 80, they don't agree. And the ventricular complex is 42. So they are very different. They are beating on their own without, um, they are meant to beat together. So that's why it be complete AV block or third AV block. Her husband, her husband has been suffering from this disorder since birth. The woman is healthy and there were no people with hemophilia among her ancestors to determine the likelihood of the boy. So we know um, hem um, hemophilia is extinct, so the boys will mostly get it from the mother, but the mother is healthy. So the boy's been infected? Of course, no. So it doesn't matter if the father was affected, yes. So the father probably got this from, uh, the husband probably got this from his own mother. But the children can only get it from their mother, and the mother is healthy. So that's why the answer is zero. A 35 year old uh, part uterine woman is diagnosed with pain syndrome with delay in the first stage of labor. What drug should you give for pain relief? So I think I explained how you should be able to approach this question. Morphine is mostly due to like serious um, operation and it causes respiratory depression. And the woman is in labor. I don't think we want to risk respiratory de depression. Codeine is too light. And we know that promidor does not cause respiratory depression and it's very good in um, labor for pain relief. And this is the other name. It is not that hepatitis D virus becomes the defective virus that can reproduce in the host cell only in the presence of, so um, and we have uh, A, B, C, D, E of, um, of hepatitis. So we know that A and E is fecal oral, B and C are blood to blood transfusion, but B have more like fluid, like saliva, sweat. But hepatitis D can only infect a patient in when the patient already has hepatitis B infection. Yes? So you can watch this video by rapid review. Okay, so the answer would be B because you need presence of hepatitis B for hepatitis D virus to you know infect. A man complains that the mention of past tragic events in his life, he develops tachycardia, shortness of breath, and a sharp increase in blood pressure. What structures of the central nervous system enable such cardiorespiratory response? So to be cerebral cortex, because I told you that we have uh, a little voluntary control of our heart rate and our 
blood pressure, but it's very, very little. And you can only really activate it when you are in, like, in emotion, you are thinking, or you are excited, maybe because you got proposed to you, or you are thinking. But normally, the main regulation is you is involuntary, but you have a little voluntary control, so it will be what's cerebral cortex. An electron micrography of the rare bone marrow shows megakaryocyte. It's peripheral part of the cytoplasm permeated by demarcation channels. What is the role of this structure? So I told you that your megakaryocytes give rise to your platelets. And what happens is that when they are in contact with this demarcation channel, they break off to form little platelets. So what is the role of these demarcation channels? Of course, it was separate platelet separation or thrombocyte separation, the same thing. A 20-year-old woman with intestinal polyposis has a, risk, a history of frequent fungal and viral disease. What part of the immune system is likely to be affected? So I told you that your T um, cells are mostly for viral, fun, for viral infection, fungal infection, and mycobacterial infection. So that's, I think, tuberculosis. Your B cells are mostly for bacterial infections, protozoa, and um enteroviruses so bacteria like uh, maybe uh, pneumonia yes or any bacteria so because this is a frequent viral and fungal infection is what t-lymphocytes a biopsy material obtained from the arches of the patient's soft pallor due to suspected tumor microscopy detected and also with the dense well in the biopsy material this the following was detected the process of the mucosal infiltration of the sub mucosal layer by lymphocytes, epithelial cell, plasma cell, and single neutrophil. The axial, there was what endovasculitis and perivascularitis, what disease is this? So I think that syphilis and tuberculosis is very similar. But once you see endovasculitis or perivascularitis, or you see inflammation around a vessel, always go for what? Syphilis. A 32-year-old woman came to the emergency department complaining of bloody diarrhea, fatigue, and confusion. So bloody diarrhea. Okay, remember that I told you that uh, cholera did not invade. Yes, so that's why it's mostly diarrhea, no blood. It's just watery stool. But shigella invades your intestine. So that's why there'll be blood in your stool. So bloody diarrhea. So this is shigella. Because she eats uh, food in a birthday party. So we know that shigella is fecal aura. What should you study? So, of course, you study this tool because it's important to study this tool. So, I strong okay, remember the video I was talking about uh, the T and B cell. I strongly recommend you watch this video, Immunologic Disorder by this person. So, Shigella, I strongly recommend you watch this video by Osmosis. So, stool. A patient with acute transmural left ventricular myocardial infarction had died of cardiac rupture and tamponade. What process in the infection zone could have contributed to this rupture? What did they say? Acute transmural. So all layer of the left ventricle was infected, so they died. Because it's acute, what happens if you have a dead tissue acutely? Yes, yeah, so it will be mushy because these cells are dead. But if there was chronic, it's what replaces dead cardiac muscle. It will be a connected tissue or scar. Yes, yeah, so they say what contributes to the uh, rupture of the heart. So it will be autolytic process because of the ischemia due to the infarction and softening of the myocardial tissue, myomalacia, because I told you when it's a lot of infarction, there's no time for the connected tissue to start to form. So the heart will be soft. So that's why there was a um, rupture. But if it was chronic, it would be formation of scar. Yes, yeah? so scar formation with thinning of the wall of the left cardiac ventricle. The same thing as replacement of connective tissue with decrease in myocardial elasticity. Yes, so if it was chronic, it could be both of these answers. Yes, so Bokrok will not put both of the answers. A man presents with noticeable progressive muscular dystrophy. What indicator of urinary nitrogen metabolism is characteristic of this condition? So it would be creatine. Creatinine is for the word, is for the kidney we just explained and you see creatine creatine when there's a disorder of the muscle or breakdown disorder causing breakdown of muscle or tissue examination of the femoral bone detected chronic suppurative inflammation of compact bone structure and bone marrow once you see formation of bone sequestra it will be chronic osteomyelitis. Oh, they already said yeah, chronic suppurative inflammation. So it's what osteomyelitis. But they just talk about suppurative inflammation. They didn't go about bone sequestral formation to be acute osteomyelitis. 
In a woman with bronchial asthma, a viral infection provoked a fatal status asthmaticus. Pulmonary histology showed a spasm and edema of bronchioles, so on and so forth. They're talking about asthma. I read that asthma is a classic sign of what type 1 hypersensitivity, which is also called Reagan hypersensitivity, due to like what a logobulin E. So there's mass degranulation of mass cell. Also, if Croc talk about and a hypersensitive reaction that's occurring like almost immediately to be type 1 hypersensitivity. We explain this in the um, microbiology and the pathophysiology um, section, like in detail. An infant presents with colored sclera and mucous membrane. The infant's urine becomes dark when exposed to air. Hormone gentisic acid was detected in the blood and urine, what is the likely diagnosis of the condition? So this is a biochemistry question, which we covered in detail, but I will just show you a quick um, picture. See, it's, the urine changes dark when there's exposure to um, air here. Okay, so that's why the answer would be uh, our captain area. Yes, and it's due to uh, adobe accumulation of homogentesic acid because you cannot metabolize it. Also, I also want to quickly explain um, phenylketonuria in case anybody is watching this video for the first time. So, the, is that, so you can see the urine changes green when you um, mix, when you um, um, form a, when you conduct the um, test with ferric chloride, so FeCl, the urine will turn green. But cystinuria is due to accumulation of cysteine nodes. Cysteine with an I, not cysteine with E, because cysteine is formed, but cysteine is very soluble. But when it changes to cysteine, it's not soluble, and this can um, form stone in the urinary system, causing cystinuria. So it would be a urea, albinism, you don't know what that is. Against the background of an allergic reaction, a child developed pharyngeal edema. What type of respiratory failure developed in this case? So I think I explained it so perfectly in the um, pathophysiology lecture, but just look in case anybody wants to remember. Of lung diseases, these are the causes. So you can see what's spasm of the larynx, yes? And you can see the causes here. And then restricted lung disease, you can see the causes here. Yeah, also, these are the diseases of under obstructive, and these are the diseases on Restrictive. In obstructive, this person cannot, ex it's more difficult for them to exhale air, and restrictive is more difficult for them to inspire air. So that's how it will be obstructive because of this laryngeal edema. A man has asked a cosmetologist to remove a tattoo from the shoulder. What substance contained in a connective tissue remains the spread of dye? So we can see here that. Um, the high level of, of ironic acid helps to pump blood and hydrate skin. And you can read here, it forms by providing a protective barrier and hydrating the skin. And they just ask you what substance contained in the connective tissue removes the spread of dye. So forming a barrier to be hyaluronic acid. The process of tissue respiration is accompanied by oxidation of organic compound and synthesis of macroergic molecules, so ergic energy. What organelle provides this function? Of course, tissue respiration is mitochondria. Your red blood cell doesn't have what's mitochondria. That's why they use anaerobic glycolysis. A man has tissue ischemia below the knee joints, accompanied by intermittent claudic claudication. What artery is most likely to be damaged? So, of course, it will be the popliteal artery because... Should I show you guys a photo? Yes, I will. What do you see here? So uh, below the knee joint. So of course, the so below the knee joint should be this artery. So this artery is when there was no blood or it was occluded because uh, there was something interfering with the popliteal um, artery, as you can see here. Yes, good. So that's how the answer is popliteal artery. A 16-year-old man complains of itching between the fingers and of the abdomen that intensifies at night. Examination detects thin gray streaks and fine rash on the skin. What is the most likely causative agent of the disease? So we did this in the last um, um, series, the last video. We talked about all the insect of medical biology that question. question. I think we did that in 19 minutes. I would uh, link all the videos in the, in the description box. Also, I will also 
put the video in the and um, there's that opt-in that is there's something here that is to show sorry forgive me so it's with a copy scape because we know that um it's i want to see each in between the fingers and abdomen so there's a characteristic pattern of the way the rash there's a particular location of the rash and these are one of the common location and when you see thin gray streaks and fine rash on the skin yes it's a copy scabers Histology of the thyroid gland that was removed in course of a surgery revealed destruction and atrophy of the follicle and diffuse lymphocytic infiltration with formation of lymphoid follicles in the stroma. This type of thyroiditis belongs to the following group. So uh, let's look at thyroiditis. But we explain this in the pathomorphological section. Let's look for the thyroiditis. Mm-hmm. Oh, don't tell me I didn't send it. I didn't send it. Okay, I, I don't think I sent it, sorry. We have one, two, three, four, five. Interesting. Okay, I didn't send it, but what should you know? In um, Graves' disease, they will talk about papillae formation. So if you look here, if you look here, uh, here, here, here. You can see in Graves' disease, also called basal disease or diffuse toxic goiter. What did they write here? Uh, proliferation of epithelial formation of papillaries. But in Hashimoto's disease, what happened is that the thyroid gland, this thyroid gland, mm -hmm, as you can see, uh, what happened is that in, um, there would be a, um, there will be atrophy of this thyroid follicle, but there will be formation of lymphatic nodules, also called lymphatic follicles, in the connective tissue. But you don't have you have papillar formation in um, Graves' disease. The question said what atrophy of the follicle, so thyroid follicle. But what did they say? Formation of lymphoid follicle, also called lymphoid nodule, in the stroma or connective tissue. So it will be what Hashimoto. I know Hashimoto is an autoimmune disorder. A man has trauma and subsequent hemorrhagic hemorrhagic. Uh, borosities of the left knee region when examined three months later he has a limited range of mo motion in the joint because of what scar formation what component of inflammation is the basis of development of this complication so scar formation is what proliferation of what fibroblasts that secrete what collagen to form the scar so it's a broad proliferation a 40 year old man with pulmonary tuberculosis was prescribed asoniazid Prolonged taking of this drug carries us in the development of the fluid deficiency. So, asoniazid uh, inhibits the, um, let's say, the formation of, or no. I strongly recommend um, this video, uh, Tuberculosis Pharmacology by um, Simple Nursing. I recommend the video, but you should know that it interferes with the uh, with uh, per, with uh, vitamin B6, which is pyridoxine. Because they always try to confuse students by putting folic acid and vitamin B12, because they, they must also change it by describing the patient is taking a tuberculosis drug and the patient is developing um, peripheral neuropathy. And we know that when there's deficiency of vitamin B12, apart from Debbie anemia, megaloblastic anemia, there's also um, a neuropathy. Okay, so a student might be thinking, oh, vitamin B12, neuropathy, and they might go for cobalamin, but don't make that mistake that isoniazid is always what vitamin B6, so paroxysin. Don't mistake with folic acid or Obalamin. 38 minutes. Can we do the many five questions in two minutes? Yes. Mother of a two-year-old child has made an appointment with the dentist. She complains of teeth destruction in her child. The milk teeth are deformed. What did they say? It revealed that during pregnancy, she had been taking antibiotics without the doctor's prescription, which caused this teratogenic effect. Why? Because we all know that tetracyclines, like um, doxycycline, yes, they, they one of their side effects is destruction of the tooth or of the child or yellowing of the tooth of the child. So that's why the answer will be tetracycline. A, a bioterrorist has made an envelope with a powder that is suspected to contain anthrax causative agents. This envelope can remain dangerous for a long time because anthrax causative agents, because anthrax. Anthrax because anthrax causative agent is a what is a spore former. So we know that when bacteria is in is in an unfavorable uh, environment, they form if they can form spore, this spore makes them to be able to survive these bad environments. So 
anthrax is dangerous because they can survive for a long time because they they can spore form and when they they can they can they are spore formers and when they're in a favorable environment they will now uh, they will become activated when examining a child the pediatrician noted that the child presents with delayed physical and mental development. Urine analysis showed an acute increase in the level of keto acid that produces a qualitative color with ferric chloride. What are you thinking? Of course, when you get on your ear. A patient with high blood level of soft hemoglobin was brought to the intensive care unit. What type of hypoxia occurred in this case? So uh, we did this in part of physiology. It was a very interesting lecture, but I'll show you again in case somebody doesn't know. But we have, the, okay, look okay. here. We have, let me start from here. We have the type of hypoxia, hypoxic hypoxia, anemic hypoxia. Anemic hypoxia, when they talk about maybe blood loss or defective hemoglobin, you have anemic hypoxia. In stagnant or ischemic or circulatory hypoxia, stagnant ischemic or circulatory hypoxia is due to uh, the circulation of blood. So there's a disorder in the blood vessel or a blockage that's not allowing this blood to flow. Then in, histo in, in histotoxic hypoxia, this is in the cell, they cannot utilize oxygen. They cannot um, convert this, uh, they cannot use this oxygen. So it's the defect is in the cell. And you can see that in hypoxia, hypoxia is due to high altitude, like these are the causes, yes. And let's go back to our question. Here they said soft hemoglobin. So there's so a pathological hemoglobin, which is what anemic or okay. Um, when it is due to defect in hemoglobin, it's also called hemic, but you know, anemic is quite similar to hemic, yes. So if they put anemic, that will also be your that can also be your answer, yes. A man suffers from acne and inflammatory changes in the skin of the face. Microscopy of a material obtained from the lesion foci revealed elongated creatures of the phylum Arthropoda with four pairs of reduced limbs. What is diagnosis? So, if you watch that 19 minute lecture we did on the insects, we know that when they talk about the you know, skin of the face, and uh, talking about an Arthropoda that has four pairs of reduced limbs, it will always be demodescosis or demodex infection. Because if you look at it, look at it, it has four pairs of short legs or reduced limb. Yes. And they mostly stay on your eyelashes and in the night, look at, can you see how creepy they look? And in the night, they come out to meet on your face. People who live in mountainous area have an increased erythrocyte in the blood, which may be caused by an increase in the production of the following in the kidney. So we explained these in the physiology, I think the first or second lecture. I told you that um, your kidney makes what erythropoietin and when and it's mostly um, released when this person is in high um, um high altitude because in high altitude region has um low partial pressure of oxygen so you increase the amount of erythrocyte via erythropoiesis so that this this there'll be a lot of blood that can take this little um, oxygen available in the atmosphere so that's why the answer will be erythropoietin and you've noticed the those who live in mountainous areas so they live there for a long time because this um erythropoietin is a long-term regulation it's not so quick but when it is stimulated it can work for you know quite a, a, a time so erythropoietin uh thank you students so that will be the end of the first part of um this um year's part we'll be doing 50 50 questions every um video so that it will be easier for students so see you guys in the next video thank you very much if you like my video don't forget to like my video if i explain something that was difficult for you you can show your appreciation by subscribing and if you have any question or you still like this video, please comment in the comment section below. I love you all and good luck in your crop preparation. Thank you very much. Once again, my name is Dr. Marianne.